Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to another rule for thirds. This rule here. Basically, if you've got two numbers, I've represented them by the letters A and B in general. If you've got two numbers divided by one another and you've got the square root then of this fraction, it's exactly the same as square rooting the top value and dividing it by the square root of the bottom value. So I'll just demonstrate that this works with some obvious answer. Let's say, for instance, we had the square root of 36 divided by 4. Now, normally, 36 divided by 4 would be 9, so that's the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is going to be 3. But if we apply this rule here, again, let's just do the square root then of 36 over 4. If we apply the rule, it's going to be the root of 36 then divided by the root of 4. And the root of 36 is going to be 6, and the square root of 4 is going to be 2. And 6 divided by 2 equals 3, agreeing with this result up here. OK, well, let's see how we can use this, say, in more advanced problems. Let's suppose we had, for instance, the square root of 8 ninths. So we'll have our 8 ninths here. How can we break this down? Well, this would be the same as the square root of 8 then, divided by the square root of 9. And square root of 8, we can break this down as 4 times 2, picking a square number which is a factor of 8. So this is the same as the square root of 4 times 2. And then this will be over the square root of 9. Now, square root of 4 times 2 is exactly the same as doing the root of 4 times the root of 2. I showed you that in an, an earlier tutorial. And this will be over the root of 9. Now, I can square root 4, get 2. Root 2, just leave it as root 2. Hasn't got a nice square root but root 9 has, that's going to be 3. So we end up with 2 root 2 over 3. And if you did this calculation on your calculator, it would display this result. I'll show you. The square root then of, and we'll just use the fraction button here, of 8, and we'll put the cursor down to the bottom there, ninths, send the cursor out to the front, and then what does this equal? 2 root 2 then over 3, just as we got. Now in my next example, I want to show you something else which is different from what we've got here. Let's suppose we had to work out the square root of, say, 16 fifths. Now, looks no different to what we've been doing over here. This is going to be the same as the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 5. Now the square root of 16 is obviously 4. Root 5 can't be broken down any further so it's just 4 divided by root 5. 4 over root 5. Now if you were to check this out on the calculator Let's see what happens. We put in the square root then and we'll set up the fraction button. We've got 16 and we'll send the cursor down to the bottom here over 5. And we'll push the cursor out to the end here and by pressing equals we don't get 4 over root 5 but we get this answer 4 root 5 over 5. So, why is this? Why does the calculator show us a completely different answer? Well, this answer is in fact correct. But it just gives us a different form of the answer. It does something which we call rationalizing. And it's something I'm going to be talking about in my next video. But just very briefly here, just to give you an idea why. 
what it does is it times top and bottom of this fraction by root 5. And root 5 divided by root 5 is effectively 1. So we're multiplying this by 1. So it's not going to change the value, but it will change the appearance of it. And what we get then is 4 times root 5 is 4 root 5. And then this is divided by root 5 times root 5, which is just 5. Remember, it's the square root of 25, which will be 5. And that then is what the calculator displays. So this concept here is called rationalizing. And what we've done here is we've rationalized the denominator here. Okay, so this is something, as I say, we'll be looking at in my next video. Well, I hope this has given you some idea anyway of how we go about simplifying the square root of a fraction by applying this particular rule. But as I say, in my next video, I'll be showing you how we rationalize fractions where we have a root in the denominator.